Right. So if you're hoping a drop in your energy bill was on the horizon, I'm afraid you might have to think again, because ministerial misprint and current Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, might be about to throw a spanner in the works. You'll know this already, of course, if you regularly watch my content, but wholesale gas prices, which dictate the price we pay for all our energy, whether you even use gas itself or not, have plummeted, falling from a high of 704 pence per therm back in August to 146 pence per therm today. So a big old drop. But because the energy suppliers buy in bulk in advance, the savings from wholesale prices falling doesn't get passed on to us immediately. Well, we're expecting the suppliers to buy at wholesale prices again soon, now lower. When exactly, we don't know, though. It'll vary from one supplier to another, I expect, and then hopefully sell to us at lower prices too. But Jeremy Hunt, he might be about to scupper those long-hoped-for lower bills. Well, we have all been getting a bit of help with our bills to greater or lesser extents from the Energy Price Guarantee Scheme, haven't we, which was introduced to help offset the sudden startling rise in wholesale gas costs last year. It began in October, where energy costs got a cap, in inverted commas, because it was simply a cap on the unit's price, not on how much you used, but it helped keep costs down a bit. The cap currently sits at £2,500, but Hunt is set to let it rise to £3,000 in his March budget, meaning we will all have to find more of the cost of our energy once more, even though our bills won't necessarily have come down by then. In fact, they aren't likely to have done. Along with the extra government help towards bills coming to an end as well, the £400 we've all had, some of us have had more depending on circumstances, the two combined could see bills rise by up to 40%. That's 40% on top of where our bills still are now, still unmanageable for far too many people, even if you're working. And all of it happening despite wholesale prices falling? It's utterly demented, downright cruel and completely unnecessary. Well, as you might have guessed, this is something Martin Lewis has waded into. And to be honest, for those of us with an inkling as to how UK economics really works, he stated the obvious by saying Hunt needn't let the energy price guarantee rise. It's his choice to do that. And that's been backed up by financial analysis, admittedly by Deutsche Bank. I know, the banksters, but they're coming out on our side for a change here, so bear with me. And they've said the cost of maintaining the cap where it is at £2,500 would only cost £4.5 which, yes, it's a huge amount of money, but it's a fraction of what they've already spent on the scheme. And the difference it would make to ordinary people waiting to see their bills fall is huge. It's putting people first. Hunt is cutting off support before such changes come in because he's putting the economy before people. Who exactly is the economy supposed to work for again? So why is he doing it? He must have somebody to blame. It's got to be someone else's fault. That's what Tories do when they choose to go full on nasty party, isn't it? So who is he pointing the finger at? Well, it's the energy companies themselves. And this will tickle you. It did me. So the Tories introduced a windfall tax on the stupidly massive profits the energy firms have been making by exploiting us to within an inch of our lives. However, they're blaming the fact they haven't got as much in the way of windfall tax as they were expecting. And the reason for that is because the wholesale gas prices have fallen. You mean you didn't see that coming? I mean, it's OK for the tax receipts to the government to drop with immediate effect, as the wholesale gas price does, but not our bills, it seems. I mean, it's somewhat obvious that as wholesale prices drop, so will the scale of the profits being made. But if the Tories weren't such hand ringers when it came to taxation, they'd have demanded a fairer cut, demanded a fixed sum, perhaps, which was quite conceivable as a one-off measure and would actually have made more sense, given everyone keeps saying how volatile the market is. Instead, they've been meek and mild to the energy corporations and are punching down on us instead to suck it up. Now, Hunt has put measures in place to continue to support the most vulnerable, the poorest households, those on social security. That's what he's saying he's going to do. But when so many in work who won't be eligible are struggling just as much because work no longer pays enough to live on, this is going to again stoke division between those still getting help and those who will now be denied it. Don't fall for it, is all I can say. This is Tory-engineered assholery, not the fault of the disabled or the out-of-work. So where is the regulator in all of this? Though? Where is Ofgem? Well, as a non-ministerial government department laughably referred to as an independent watchdog, they're very much watching and not doing very much helping. In fact, their decision to roll out the market stabilisation charge indefinitely, which is the measure by which energy companies being switched to have to compensate the former supplier for the loss of a customer due to the high wholesale prices they'll have paid previously, means better energy deals are not likely to materialise very quickly when bills do 
finally start coming down and could in fact slow the reduction of prices even further as companies strive to avoid having to compensate rivals for offering better deals. Again, instead of challenging big business, the Tories show what cowards and bullies they are by again inflicting unnecessary pain on ordinary working class people. And Jeremy Hunt is again proving what a mad-eyed total hunt he is.